everybody, how is it going? It is your pal, Sal here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another little vlog that I'm shooting for you guys. So tonight, it is currently, oh you, what time is it? It's 12, wait, hang on, sorry, I have to look at my watch. It is 12.32 and um, I'm about to head into work, but after I get out of work at five, I'm heading downtown to Chicago to go see the new, well, it's not really new, the national tour of Hairspray the Musical. Uh, I was originally gonna try and win the lottery for this show, but last week that didn't end up happening and I was just like, screw it, I'll buy a ticket. I was able to use the hot text code and I got a ticket for Made It Orchestra, which thankfully, if you've ever been, because it's at the CIBC Theater, if you've ever been there, it can be a nightmare with seating. So thankfully I was able to get a good seat uh, and I'm very happy about that, but I'm excited because this tour that I'm seeing of Hairspray is technically a product, it's a replica of the original Broadway production that was on Broadway from I think 2001 to 2009. Uh, and back when I was in fourth grade and the Hairspray movie came out, I was obsessed and I never got to see the show live. I did see a really bad high school production of it, uh, but I've never seen like a fully professional production and that's what this is. I can't believe that tonight I'm gonna fulfill my four, fourth grade fantasy of seeing Hairspray on stage, but I am, and I thought I'd take you guys along with me to go see it. So, uh, let's go. I'm currently here at the train station waiting for the good old train. All right, so I made it into the city. I was doing some walking around and currently I'm about to turn over to head over to the CIBC Theater over here past the van store. Um, I should be able to see it any second now. So we're coming up to it right now. There it is, good old hairspray. Wow, I haven't been in this theater in ages. All right, I just picked up my ticket. So go straight to your bin mode out and then go to break it off. And then you scan. Everybody, I am filming this part of the video about a week after I saw Hairspray. I saw Hairspray on February 12th of 2022. That was a Saturday and it's currently Thursday. It took me some time to sit down and do this, but I'm here today. So we're going to talk about the national tour of Hairspray the Musical. So as many of you guys know, I did see it at the CIBC Theater in Chicago, which I think there's a playbill. Uh, it's here where it was called the Private Bank Theater right next to me. So this is the theater in Chicago that I absolutely hate. So the CIBC Theater, which has gone under 20 five different names over the past 10 years. Um, it is the smallest, the well it's not because technically the Broadway Playhouse is the smallest in Chicago, but the CIBC Theater was just designed horribly. Uh, the sight lines are horrible. I hate the theater. I really do. It's a rough, it is a rough theater to sit through. Thankfully, because I do know the theater, I did know where to look for to get a seat. And so I was mid-orchestra, which you can see in the video that I posted. And I had a good seat, so I was very pleasantly happy with that because I knew, but if you don't know, do a little research before you buy a ticket at the CIBC Theater because if you book, if you, you never know, you could have a pole in front of you. It's a rough theater. So there's that. But anyways, so let's talk about the national tour of Hairspray. So I did a little research and the last time a Hairspray national tour came to Chicago itself was in 2005. So it has been many years. Now granted, I'm sure there's been regional productions and stuff like that, but a national tour of the original production has not come through since 2005. And it's funny because, you know, I did grow up with a lot of bootlegs of Hairspray. So there is a bootleg actually of when that stop happened in Chicago and it has Keela C... What, I, I forget how to say her name. Keela Seattle or C Seattle from The Greatest Showman is Tracy in it. Aaron, a young Aaron Tveit is uh, Link Larkin. Uh, Casey Levy is Penny. It's a very, it's a blast from the past, that's for sure. So it's interesting to me because, you know, I learned about Hairspray in 2007 when the movie came out and I was obsessed and yada, yada, yada. So I thought I passed up a chance to see it. Turns out I never really did because I never knew it existed at the time. So it was kind of cool to go in and see the show and know 
that I was seeing borderline the original production. Now we're gonna talk about that a little bit right now. So as I've said, it's a non-equity tour and it's a tour. So it's basically, I would say, this is 90% the original production of Hairspray. There are a few key differences that we should talk about. Uh, basically, the new s the, they have a big LED screen in the back of the show. So I think originally on Broadway they had an LED they had an LED they had LED lights that they could light and they would create different things and you know all that good stuff. But there's a difference between that and a screen. So a screen it was almost borderline. They were just projecting things into the background. While there were some setups that did match from what I could gather the original production, there were a lot of different different things that I noticed, like especially during Without Love, there was like just this big giant heart that honestly looked a little tacky to me. It kind of looked a little too Vegasy uh, during the back of it. Regardless of that, I didn't mind it, but I do wish that they, even though they did have that screen, I wish they had stuck more to the original lighting design that they had with that. And in terms of set, basically the set pieces are all the same. Some are a little cheaper looking than others, like the Corny Collins, like whatever it's called, like the, where the sign is and they stand on it and when Velma sings on it for Velma's Revenge. I'm not gonna lie, it looked like it was about to break at any second. It, it, it looked a little too fragile for me, uh, but that could have been for the original production too, I'm not sure. Um, but borderline, from what I could gather, a lot of the set, which is exactly how they would, they mimicked it as best they could from the original production. And even when I was looking at the tour of when it did come into Chicago in 2005, it did look like the set was really similar to, like, especially with, like, the hefty hideaway, how it would come down. It wasn't, like, a physical piece. It was only, like, a piece of board that you would move. Uh, so that I didn't mind. The costumes were basically all the same, which I loved. It was really cool sitting there knowing, you know, that basically I was getting 90% of what it looked like on Broadway. And that meant something to me because there's a lot of things I look at in my life where I'm like, I was too young to see that show. I never got to see the original production. Like, say, Pirate Queen. Like, look behind me. Like, there are so many shows here that I'll never see that original set design, that original costume design. And that makes me sad sometimes. But it was really cool to know that, you know, here we are in 2022 and I'm seeing basically the original production of Hairspray. So that meant the world to me. So I thank the team for doing the best they could to bring it on tour as it originally looked. Now, there were also a few differences in script. You have to remember back in 2001 when the show came out, we're in a very different space than we are in 2022. <laughs> uh, one of the noticeable lines, it was only, the only two lines that I noticed were well, there were three. There were three lines I noticed were changed. Two of them had to do with Penny's mom. So in the original production, now granted, I remember, I watched so many bootlegs of Hairspray back in the day. Uh, basically during Without Love, before like the big climax of the song happens, she walks in, sees Seaweed and Penny, and she's like, oh my God, and I don't like saying this, but I think it's important to like for context of it. She says, oh my God, colored people in the house will never sell it now. And then, you know, like a small beat for the audience to laugh, and then she walks off, you know, all distraught. So they cut that line out of the show. So basically when Penny, like they walk in like the bum 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 and Penny, and the mom just sees them and she's like ah and then faints it happens so quick that that big beat up doesn't really pay off anymore and i do wish that they had come up with a different line now more i guess 2020 acceptable line because i get why they cut it but i felt they could have done something to replace it other than her just fainting because you don't even realize it like when it happened i was like oh okay that was really swift it's a small thing but i re it really bothered me for some reason and then the other line that they changed they made this way more pc uh when penny's mom comes into the Corny Collins show at the end and she's like, give me back my daughter, I know you have her. Uh, she, I think the original line, it was something that was not really appropriate today, but she's like, if this fine cat, yeah, cat like young black boy is what you want, then it's fine. And then she like digs into his butt. <laughs> and I guess that doesn't work in 2022, which I get too. But the line that they had, it, it just felt, again, it felt so quick. And I do remember that being one of the, more, not the lines, but like her grabbing him. I do remember that being one of the more funny parts of the show. And again, it happened so quick that you didn't notice it. So I do wish that they, I don't know. Penny's mom is a funny role if you get the chance to play it. So I felt kind of bad that the actress who played her, um, what was her name? Let me, let me make sure I get this correct here in the playbill. I wish I, had, <laughs> I should have written this. Um, Prudy Pingleton. Uh, Emma, oh my gosh, I don't even know how I'm going to say that name. Um, Emmanuel Zesman. Uh, she was fantastic, by the way, which we'll talk about the cast in a second. But I do wish that they had given her new lines to still get those comedic laughs from like those sections of the show that were just better written. You know what I mean? And of course, we all know that the big change is in the original lyrics of You Can't Stop the Beat. And, um, uh, and you and it don't see white from black the new lyric and it sees both white and black because we've come to realize that color blindness isn't really a thing is that we have to address color uh which i think i like that lyric better anyway the new one so those are like the big changes to me now in terms of cast i do have to say this cast oh 
absolutely darling. One of the fun things about seeing a non-equity show is that usually the cast tend to be a lot younger, uh, mostly because, again, it is non-equity, uh, which means that it's cheaper for the cast and sometimes the cast usually wouldn't be treated as fairly as equity actors it's hard to say i'm not i'm not going against non-equity tours some of the best tours i've seen have been non-equity tours but it's a little shady from what i've learned so we'll leave that out there but i won't worry about that at the moment so in terms of the cast we have andrew levitt who is uh now i want to get his name right because he is a very famous drag queen from rupaul's drag race i don't know what the name nina west that's what he goes under when he does drag uh i thought was absolutely fabulous as the mom i think he was just having an absolute ball uh, the whole time i mean i loved him i thought he was great i thought he made a great Great, um, Mrs. Turnblad. Uh, then we have Nikki, oh, wait, did I get that? No, I got it right. Nikki Metcalf as Tracy Turnblad, who, again, I thought was absolutely adorable, too. Probably, I would say, really gave Tracy, I would say, if I, if I was to compare us, because, I mean, the original Broadway Tracy, uh, Marissa Jarrett Winoker, is a very, like, you know, the eh, eh. It comes off, at least in my eyes now in 2022, very too charactery almost, like too, how do I, I mean, too like stock charactery. I think that Nikki found a good way to make her very human, and it felt like I was going through Tracy's journey throughout this entire show. I loved that. I loved her. I thought she was fabulous, had an amazing voice, loved her. Um, Billy Dawson as Corny Collins was absolutely fantastic. Will, oh my god, I gotta get this right, Savaris. Uh, was wonderful as Link Larkin. Again, he looked very young, I think, compared to some of the other cast members, but I liked him too. Uh, in terms, I want to talk about this. Emery Henderson, who played Penny, uh, the whole time the show was going, I was like, who does she look like? Who does she remind me of? And then at the end, when she has her hair big and all dolled up, uh, she says, uh, you know, I'm a pretty girl mama and all that. I realized who I thought she looked like, and I wonder if anyone's ever thought this too, if they've seen her in the show. She looks exactly like the actress who plays Tula from My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And I love that. I stand that, and we love that. So, good for her. I would love to look like Tula. <laughs> um, who else was in some of the great cast? Brandon G. Stalling was fantastic as Seaweed. Kaylee Alberton and Edison Garner were both wonderful as um, Velma and Amber. I loved them. And I did see an understudy for Motormouth Maybell, who I'm, I have the name written right here. Gabrielle Thomas, who I thought was great as Motormouth Maybell, too. I just have to say, I think the cast was absolutely fantastic. I don't have one complaint about them. I thought everybody did a great job. Oh, and also, um... Where is he in here? Christopher Swan is Wilbur. I thought he was great too. I thought, again, I really did think everybody was good. Everybody looked like they were having an absolute blast. Uh, I loved every second of seeing it. Like I said, it meant a lot to me knowing that I was seeing Borderline, the original production. And I think that's always going to be something that sticks out of my memory. So if you're planning on going to see the National Tour of Hairspray, I highly recommend it. It's the closest I think we'll ever get again to seeing the original Broadway production. Uh, and if, just the fact that the Playbill has the original, the original poster, I mean... This is so cool. I loved it. I loved every second of it. Again, my one complaint is that maybe they could have put a little less money into that new LED screen and more into sets, but I mean, what are you going to do? So if you guys saw the Hairspray National Tour, what did you think? Let me know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at Salvador J. Rocha, Twitter at Sal Says Stuff, and TikTok at Sal Rocha 1. Now I will see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye.